the battle on Onigashima rages on as both Kid and Law have managed to take down Big Mom. All the way down. All the way down. <laughs> she fell into a hole and exploded. <laughs> like, <laughs> that was really cool. I can't lie about that. But we also got some hints that something regarding the One Piece, a piece of it, might be in Wano? What could that mean? I wonder if we'll find out. And whose battle will we focus on next? Join me, won't you? Alright, One Piece, chapter 1041, Komurasaki. I mean, hey, <laughs> like, let's be honest, at this point, the only people left to deal with are Orochi and Kaido. So, let's deal with Orochi. But first, we have putting decking Niji and Yonji in the face, says Jerma's Ah, An Emotionless Excursion, Volume 5. This is what you get for bullying Sanji Deer. Pudding Punch! <laughs> nice! Ah, uh, Pudding needs to marry Sanji. <laughs> like, get you a girl who will fight your brothers for you. Alright. Oh yeah, and Zanisha is on its way. We have uh, Momonosuke still pulling Onigashima. And Momonosuke says, I spoke with Zunisha once before, but only for a moment, so I do not know the truth of the matter. And Zunisha says, Momonosuke, I await your orders. I have come to join the fight at your side. Shit! Zunisha did turn up to throw down, and just as government ships are coming to sack Wano, that is awesome. Like, that is, like, the best deterrent for people to come in and try to take over your country. We have a massive fucking elephant island that could basically take down anything you throw at us. And Yamato says, that's incredible, Momonosuke. You can actually talk to the elephant? I know, right? It's just as Odin anticipated- Wait, Odin anticipated this? You are the one who will guide the world to the dawn. Huh. See, I'm- th That makes me curious about what's written in Odin's journal that Yamato's just like, Hey, it's just as Odin anticipated. How would he have anticipated that? Nothing in the flashback indicated that he would know that someone could control Zunisha like that. Or maybe, did Odin just hypothesize about that? Huh. Momonosuke says, still struggling with the island, After reading Father's journal, I learned why it is so important I must not die. Hmm. But for some reason, Father tore out the page with the most crucial part- Of course he did! Oh, of course he did. Jesus. Ah. He was probably trying to make sure that nobody unscrupulous read it, in case of his death or something. Momonosuke says, What did he and Roger's crew see on that final island that made them laugh? I do not understand what the goal is. Father was not a prophet. If he was still alive now, would he really still say open Wano's borders? Man, Momonosuke is speaking for the fans right now. It's just like, what the frick did they see on that island that made them laugh? I'm not smart enough to understand. You and me both, kid. If it would mean exposing people, the people of Wano to danger, I do not wish to open the borders. Am I simply a coward, Yamato? No, you're thinking for yourself. Like, seriously. It's like, outsiders are the reason why our land got in so much trouble, but also, a lot of that came because of Orochi. But Orochi opened the land to outsiders, but those outsiders were scrupulous. So it's just like, there's a bit of back and forth thought you could have there. And back at the third floor, Battle of the Connected Passage, <laughs> we finally got the confirmation. Winner, Rizo. And Raizo's finally crying out now that Fukurukuju is, I would say, dead, but it's sometimes hard to tell with One Piece. He looks like he's dead, burnt to a crisp, but Raizo is crying out, Ow, oh, ow, oh, it's so not hot. It's not hot at all. He's still trying to be brave. There's no one to see you suffer, Raizo. You can just say it's hot, dude. Ah, uh, but he says... This is an age when even ninja should be free, Fukurokuju. And then we have Jinbei come upon him. Jinbei's just stumbling upon everybody at this point. You there, Samurai. Why aren't you running? You. 
You're with Sir Luffy. Must hurry. How careless of me. The preparations were already complete. Preparations? What? What preparations? Treasure repository, second floor. Okay, we're moving on. Orochi is crying out. And it seems like Komurasaki was kind of knocked off her feet or something. So she's lying down. Orochi says, Fukurokuju. Where is that garbage ninja? What in the world is he doing? He's burning. Because of the fire you started, asshole. He better not have run off to save his own skin. Was that shaking Kanjiro's work? I can only hope this is the end of it. <laughs> yeah, right. And Komurasaki gets back up and starts playing her shamisen again. Or if she says, hey Komurasaki, why would you play at a time like this? Stop it. Put that instrument down with your pretentious mask. You always wear that stupid mask when you play. This is a moment of life and death. Take it off already. Are you really Komurasaki or a ghost? You were supposed to be dead. You're only just questioning this now? But the roof starts to kind of cave in on top of Orochi and it kind of crushes him. He's just buried underneath the rubble. It says, hmm, what is this? I cannot transform. I cannot get free. And Komurasaki says, you were so stunned. You never even noticed it, did you? Orochi says, what? Are you paying attention, Komurasaki? Get this rubble off of me. And then she says, I used nails of sea prism stone to ensure you could not turn into that monster. Nail? Did she like cut him or something? He says, what are you talking about? Why? I thought you loved me. And then Komurasaki says, love you? You jest, sir. Oh no, you jest, sire. I have not the tiniest affection for you. Orochi is shocked. Here it comes. Strangely enough, that song you love, Moon Princess, and she thinks back to when she first started, she first learned the song, or first played it for her father. Odin says, I like that song you play, Hoyori. She says, really? It's called Moon Princess. I'm going to learn to play it even better. And she says, Moon Princess was also the favorite of my father. Kazuki Odin. And Orochi just looks so shocked. Like dead shocked. Father. And she says, how could it possibly put a smile on my face? Oof. Here it goes. Here it goes. Ugh. Divine retribution. Ooh. Yo, Izo. Wow, he actually managed to hold his own pretty handedly against CP0. Says, Castle Basement and Izo, he's thinking, just survive, Kiku. As you see one of the CP0 agents, the one, the taller one with the weird mask, doing the Shigan, I think the finger pistol, and Izo fires at him and they take each other out. Jeez. And the one in the bowler hat is just getting up and he's crying out, no, damn you, Izo. And then he looks over at the other CP0 agent and says, Maha! And he goes crawling over to the guy. You were determined to take us down with you then. Damn it. Why is a leftover from Whitebeard's crew helping those ki these kids out? I need to hurry and get Nico Robin. Still keeping his eyes on the prize. This isn't the end for Izo, is it? I couldn't imagine. But then he gets a call. What is it? It's just one thing after another here. Like, seriously? <laughs> they are having no luck as they go along. But I guess Rob Lucci or someone contacts him. Listen closely. The five elders have issued an edict. The guy says, the five elders? Uh, was the other guy who was still hanging out in the, uh, what does Tekken call it? The indestructible break room? It's not looking so indestructible anymore. He says, eliminate Straw Hat at Luffy at once. And then the other guy with the bowler hat says, what do you mean? Straw Hat is fighting Kaido right now. You want me to interfere with Kaido's battle? That's impossible. And then the other guy says, they know full well it's impossible. It's a world-class battle, which is why it's so dangerous. These orders are meant to prevent the worst-case scenario, you understand. And you see in the background behind the one guy who's in that break room or whatever. No, no. He's behind the guy in the bowler hat, I think. And x Drake says, I can't die for nothing with nothing to show for it. Okay, so... With them both injured, I think Drake might be able to take this dude. But the guy on the other end says, the guy in the break room says, Though it's a scenario we only know through rumors and hearsay. And the one CP0 guy says, What is it about that crew? So, is 
the major devil fruit that the Gorose was talking about, the five elders, was it in fact Luffy's fruit? It's starting to seem like it might be. Castle Basement, we have Usopp and the one giraffe smile user transporting Kiku and Kinemon. There's no escape, the whole castle's burning! We're not gonna let you die, so stray strong, got that? Look for an exit, Hamlet. The castle's ready to fall. And Hamlet says, I'm on it, boss. And then we pick back up with Carrot, Wanda, and Nekamamushi. Nekamamushi says, Wanda, Carrot, under the dome. Yes, sir. Who knows when this thing might fall? How long will this island stay up? So the sides of Onigashima are starting to kind of crumble off. We pick up with Frankie, who has managed to get to where Zora was and catch him before he fell. Hey, you alive down there? Talk to me, Zoro. You ain't dead, are you? He's definitely not dead, but uh, he's looking dead-ish. And then we cut over to Endable Kingdom, bath, forehead floor, inside the dome. We got cheers going on. They got her! And Nami talking with Zeus. They're in an uproar after that huge shaking. I guess Traffy and the other guy beat Big Mom. What about the fire in the castle? I hope Usopp and the others are safe. And Zeus is saying, Mama. So he does feel some sympathy towards what happened to Big Mom. But then Nami says, Listen, Zeus, who do you care about more? Big Mom or me? And Zeus says, uh, y You, Nami, you. And then Tama says, He he maru. Komachio, you did great. And I guess Marco's looking after them. He says, They're all right. Watch out for falling chunks from the ceiling. And Speed says to Otama, take shelter with me, master. Marco then says, keep your wits about you to the end. Things are still in flux. This is the most dangerous island in the world right now. You got that right. Back over in the battlefield where Law and Kid claim victory, you got their crew cheering. Big Mom has fallen in battle. You did it, boss. Captain! And then Kid says while breathing heavy, You still got enough for Kaido? And Law is just like, Nah, I'm done. If the man who emerges from that fight turns out to be Kaido, then I don't have the willpower left to resist. <laughs> These guys are down. They are out. Like, I've, I've heard people talk about the fact that they kept saying, okay, that's all I got. And then they pushed themselves even further. Okay, that's all I got. And then they pushed themselves even further. I, I think it's more of a thing where if you were like running a marathon and it's just like, okay, whew, okay, that's, 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 that's it. That's all I got. Only for something to just come running up behind you. It's just like, you still got energy to keep going. Like, if something dangerous was behind you, you still got enough energy to just kind of keep going a little bit further. And then you stop it, it's just like... <sighs> I really need that to be the end. I really need that to be an end. You're still upright, but you're still like breathing heavy. You're just really tired. You want to sit down. For the love of God, let me sit down. And then something else happened, like a major explosion go off. And you have to start running again. It's just like, no, you have to keep going. Because if you stop, you die. If you stop, you die. So you keep going even further. And it's just like, once you're done, you are not moving after that. But, you know, the first time around when you're just like, okay, I'm done. It's just like, you can walk. You can just walk around. You still be able to do stuff. You know, you slowly take back up your stamina. Second time around, it's just like, I need to sit down. I need to sit the fuck down. I'm tired. I, I, I need to take a break. But then something else happens, and it's just like, yeah, I'm not moving. I can't move. Like, I have pushed myself beyond the beyond beyond. Anything more? No. Like, it hurts to talk. Like, the whole idea of human limitation, it mostly just comes from the fact that just, like, you're hit running up against what your body is telling you, hey, that's enough. And then you go beyond that, and it's just like your body starts screaming at you, that's enough and then you go beyond that and your body's just like it's not responding anymore because you just feel nothing but pain and going beyond that at that point you're just killing yourself but we pick up with luffy and kaido's clashes Ooh, something interesting on this page you know luffy and kaido clash and they slide back kaido cries out in his hybrid form did you sense that too they've really gone and done now Lin Lin lost the fight as Kaido radiates hockey and Luffy says 
Ugh, Jackie and Traffy won? That's amazing. And Kaido thinks to himself, in a flashback where we see a young big mom looking, mm, like a snack. No wonder she got so many kids. Like, damn. She says, you got a mouth on you, kid. Hello? Can you speak? Ma, 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 ha, ma. How old are you? Only 15? You're so young. Is this the f your, is this your first time teaming up with Rock? Don't trust him. He's a scoundrel. Mm. You have any trouble? J just tell me. I'm Lin Lin, and I'm going to be the king of the sea. Just like Kaido back in the day, and just like Roger. That nature of wanting to be king, of wanting to be something great. That optimistic smile. She says, put her there. So, yeah, I always wondered about that, but yeah, Big Mom used to really look out for Kaido back in the day. Big Mom was essentially Kaido's big sister. Like, yeah, they fight, but it would almost be safe to say, like, she even was the one who gave him his devil fruit to save his life. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I really have to reevaluate Kaido and Big Mom's relationship. I honestly kind of wonder about the relationship with Whitebeard, too. Like, I need a flashback to their Rocks days. Like, how did they all interact together? Because that, that introduction? Like, Big Mom really seemed to have taken a shine to Kaido initially. And Kaido, thinking back to this, yeah, he even says it. He says, thinking back, I've known that old hag a long, long time. And just after we swore an oath to claim one piece together, and he starts crying. He was actually happy at the thought of maybe claiming it together. Yeah, they were probably going to betray each other at some point, but I think Kaido was happy to be working with Big Mom again. Phew, that's actually kind of sweet. <laughs> Like, genuine emotion right there. And then Luffy just comes in and knocks Kaido's block off. He goes, he punches him and goes into Gear 4, Snake Man. Hi, Gum Gum Hydra! And just bam, all these hits just coming in left, right, and said there. Like, Luffy's just like, I don't care about your backstory! Yeah, he essentially does say that. He says, your ambitions mean nothing to me, especially if it leaves the people here with no food to eat. This is my final gear four. I'm not stopping until I've completely run out of strength. And kind of just like, where are these punches coming from? As he just keeps being decked in the face over and over again. And Luffy cries out, I'm going to drive you out of Wano if it's the last thing I do. Luffy's just like, I'll have sympathy after I've kicked your ass. <laughs> all the way to the east blue and back oh man <laughs> what a awesome way to end this oh that is so good but yeah now luffy luffy doesn't have sympathy for people in most situations he needs to at least get in like a few hit before he can let certain things go but i don't think there's never going to be a situation where luffy feels any kind of camaraderie towards Kaido like he understands where Kaido is coming from but at the same time it's just like you've oppressed my friends I'm at least kicking your ass now if they ever end up working towards a common goal that'll be another story we saw that with Crocodile but again at the same time it's just like no I'm kicking your ass like right here right now in this moment I'm kicking your ass you come back later and we squash the beef that's whatever I don't hold grudges like that I'm still gonna not like you but I don't hold grudges like that. But man, Kaido and Big Mom had a real friendship going on, and that's actually kind of sweet. I kind of like that. I really want to know Kaido's backstory with Big Mom. If nothing else, just to see more of young in her prime Big Mom. Because damn, she's smoking. Damn, she's fine. I would gladly give that lady a baby of mine. Uh, yeah, we're definitely entering into the final barrage. Like, this is the Luffy, it feels like the Luffy all-out barrage, like, against Rob Lucci, against Crocodile, the, I'm going all the fuck in. Like, I feel like next chapter, the Orochi stuff will be fully wrapped up, and we'll just have Luffy just laying into Kaido, and then, you know, because everything else is basically settled and calmed down. You know, Nami's in a good place. Usopp just needs to make it to where Nami and the others are. Hopefully Marco can heal up Kinemon and Kiku. 
Frankie has managed to save Zoro. Whatever Drake's about to do with the one CP0 agent, I, I feel like he's going to end up being, in order to really, you know, show him helping out the Straw Hats, he's going to try to take down the one CP0 agent to make sure he can't go after Luffy. Might even actually save Luffy at the 11th hour. But good on Iza for at least taking one of those members down. Was not expecting that. Major brownie points to Izo. That moment with Hiyori and Orochi. Yo. And I'm, I'm still waiting. I, I feel like Hiyori is trying to create a situation where she gets buried along with Orochi. But I think in comes Denjiro. Saves them both. And just finishes off Orochi. Or just leaves him to burn. But Raizo has been found by Jinbei. And I think what's going to happen is... Because we've seen Zunisha splash water on their back. What's going to happen is... Zunisha's going to get all that water from the ocean... And spray it over Onigashima. Putting out all the fires. Decreasing a lot of the danger. And that also disables a lot of the beast pirates. A lot of devil fruit users. So that will be pretty interesting. And in regards to the cover page. I wonder. Putting out a retribution for Sanji. But she knows that Sanji would still want to save his brothers. Wouldn't want them just done away with in this fashion so she'll probably still free them so that's my predictions for next chapter let me know yours in the comment section below if you like anything that i had to say or agree with it feel free to subscribe that way you don't miss out on the next video or don't i ain't your daddy but i still love you like one and until next time i've been this in and i hope to see you in the next video until then bye bye